opening yourself up to cold, opening yourself up to really what the earth is. The earth is mostly cold. The earth is mostly cold. And we're always running towards warm. Now, we do that because we're a mammal. And every mammal will find a little nice little cubby hole and fill it up with little you know, pieces of socks or something, like a little mouse. And then I kind of burrow in there and you're like, you know, in the night. And, but, you know, during the day, it's running around. And so we have that kind of mammalian response. But we've taken it to an excess because we're always warm. We're never actually naked in nature as nature is. Now, fortunately, in my house, I don't have any neighbors who can see it, so I can run around the forest naked in the winter, which is a lot of fun. <laughs> Great time people over and do that. And, and that's, that's where we get into this whole thing about like opening up to actually what the British Isles are. We don't know what they are. We're inside all the time. What do we know? We're not running around nude in a forest. What do we know? We don't know. We don't know what the weather is. Here's one of my feeling about what the weather is. Do you ever see cartoons that are written in like these little funnies, and they show somebody's thought as it goes da, 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 it's a cloud. So the weather is our thoughts. And the clouds represent our dominant thoughts, our thinking. When you see something like, you know, dreary old London or whatever they say about here, why is it that way? Is it because is it, are people dreary because of the weather? Or does their dreariness create the weather? Which one is it? I submit to you, it's the latter. That we're creating it. That if you, you, you go into that, that what, imagine the thought of being in total abundance and happiness. What does that look like? Rain clouds? Uh, it's like total clear abundance, sun shining in. You ever heard this song? There's a great band out now. Graffiti 6. Stare into the sun. I gotta get that CD. You get, you get, this is a British band. Come on. Where are we? What's going on here? We're playing at the end. I get it on my sky. You got it on your sky. Okay, yeah, fantastic. Yeah. Weather is something that I'd like us all to get a little bit more in tune with. I travel all around the world, so I get in tune with the weather. And personally, for me, I have a shamanic relationship with the atmosphere, with the weather and the wind. And if you get into that relationship, you just you're in a different relationship with life in general. Basically, my feeling is if you want to open that up for yourself, eventually, as you go deeper into all of this stuff and all the shamanic medicines that are out there, you step into a more of a shamanic relationship with nature, which is a certain type of feeling. It's a feeling that you have, where you're, you're communing with a consciousness or many consciousnesses that are there, and they're communing with you, and it's a certain feeling. It's not like the weather is going, I feel today. It's just a certain feeling or a certain energy that you tune into. And that's, that, to me, is what, I'm, what, I, what I love more than anything else, is to be tuned into that feeling. That's why I love being in the forest around my house and just be completely with the environment. And that is what we've lost. That's what's crippled us. Yesterday, I talked about Avatar, that ability to punch through, taking that same self same technology and turning it around on itself, that technology that delivered us all this fake and phony BS, and to turn it around on itself and punch through out of our crippled reality into something that's real, authentic, pure, and natural. And actually, that's what got you here. This, this food, I mean, this stuff is, what this can do to you is outrageous. The transformative power of this kind of food, this kind of lifestyle, is outrageous. I couldn't actually tell you. I mean, you know, I can look around, I can see people have been doing this for a while. You know, when I think of Sky, his, de his original destiny, coming from a council home in Liverpool, being born across the street from where the Beatles were playing, and being a petty thief, you know, when he was a kid, and having no possibility of any grand future to, to see where he is today, is really a true testament of the power of this type of food. It really is powerful. To get a completely different vision of yourself. To, to have come from that and traveled the entire world. To eat the greatest delights of this entire earth. To have shamanic connections with the, with the Amazonian power plants. To have a total connection with the Ayurvedic system and the history, legends, and lore of that. The Chinese system and the history, legends, and lore of that. To travel all across North America. All across the deserts. All across Canada. right? To come from that little <coughs> council home in Liverpool. With no hope and no possibility, both parents alcoholics, both parents cigarette smokers. Who, who's, who's Whoa. We're talking about Sky. He's up there in the sauna. <laughs> <laughs> Why is he up there? Why is he up there? Because he knows that's where the action is. <laughs> 
Isn't that fascinating? That's that's here. That's what that 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 I grew up on success technology in America, and that um, that technology is amazing. I've known Tony Robbins since I was 14 years old. I've done events with Tony Robbins. You know, I've done events with all those guys. Interestingly, that I've done events with all of those guys whose material I listen to and study every single day in my car, every single day when I was home, every single day when I was making food, and now I'm doing events with them. But I'm telling you, this information blows that out of the water. And I'll tell you another thing: they know it too. Because when I get up on a stage with them, they're like, "Holy shit!" <laughs> they, they are blown away. They, they cannot even believe it. Because what I've done is taken it to the next level. It's like, we got to get real. Great, esoteric ideas, think positive. That's very difficult to do when you're drinking Coca-Cola. <laughs> it's really hard. It's possible, but it's hard. Yeah. What, what do you think about psychedelics? Have you taken them? Have I taken any psychedelics? What do you think? <laughs> <laughs> I've taken every psychedelic. And you should too, um, but I would recommend, because it's not for everybody, it definitely is not for everybody. You have to have a shamanic state of consciousness, and you have to be absolutely very grounded to be able to take those things. Um, but those are things, those are, you know, it's not like I'm doing that in a regular kind of a way, but if it shows up in my reality, like a great shaman friend of mine showed up in Montreal with ayahuasca a number of weeks ago, and I brought all my friends there, and, you know, I'll drink that through the whole night. But for me, it really doesn't do much anymore. I have to honestly tell you, I love ayahuasca, we're close friends. But we're only friends. But you know the work that that medicine does on other people is really important. The work I did on me originally. But what inevitably happens is, is you step into a place where you're kind of there already. And I never really believed that when I was a kid. I never really believed that. But no, no, I didn't really believe that. But now I do because I'm kind of in that state all the time anyway. And really, that's that's the energy of like all of these factors put together is it takes you to that place. So when I drink ayahuasca, it's not like I'm really tripping, mm -hmm. but I, I am in communion with a friend, which is nice. Mm -hmm. And you know, should you do LSD? Probably not because there's no guide. There's no guide. So we did everything, in the West we did everything back, ass backwards, which is we got into all these semi-synthetic psychedelics like ecstasy and LSD and mescaline, which are semi-synthetic, they're not synthetic, that's a BS story they told you. Um, not, no YouTube, please. No YouTube, please. On this part. And you promised me no YouTube? Yeah, thank you. Thank you. And you? Thank you. Absolutely. Okay.